Today, Triumph announced the final edition of their awesome retro cafe racer, the Thruxton. That's right, this is the last ever version of this incredible bike that they'll ever produce. And so in this video, we'll look back at the history of this model, we'll try and figure out why it's been wound down, and lastly, show you all of the details of this perfect send-off, the beautiful final edition. Now the Thruxton name first appeared on a Triumph way back in 1965 with a limited edition racing bike based upon their Bonneville T120. The name comes from Thruxton Circuit in the UK and this particular bike went on to win the top three places in the Thruxton 500 mile endurance race in 1969. After that, it was 35 years later that the name resurfaced with the Thruxton 900. This bike was built upon their air-cooled twin-cylinder Bonneville platform but given a bit more of a racy edge with low clip-on bars, rear set foot pegs and a fly screen and a seat cowl for that sporty solo look. Now that bike paved the way for the Thruxton 1200 that we know of today which was first announced in 2016. The big update here was the move over to the liquid cooled twin offering much more performance with 97 horsepower peak as opposed to the 68 of the 900s. They also changed the character of this engine with a 270 degree crank for a bit more of a snarl at the exhaust although perhaps less true to the Bonnevilles over the many years before it, which all used a 360 degree crank. Still, this bike offered plenty of punch in a beautifully designed form factor, which I think still to this day is one of the best proportion bikes on the market. Initially, it was offered as the Thruxton or the Thruxton R, the latter of which had some tasty chassis upgrades, like a pair of Olin shocks, a gold anodized Showa big piston fork, and radially mounted Brembo M50 brake calipers. Early in 2019, there was the Thruxton TFC or Triumph Factory Custom, which was dripping in carbon fiber and extra special parts. And then later that year, they announced the Thruxton RS to replace the R. With this update, they added eight more horsepower peak and used a lighter crank and clutch to give 20% less inertia in the engine for more of a free revving feel. Six kilograms was also shed from the total weight and they went with super sticky Metzler Racetech RR tires. For me, this bike is pretty much the pinnacle of what a brilliant retro can be. Fast, reliable, safe, but with some of the charm and timeless old school looks of the 60s and 70s. So that leads to the glaring question, if it's so good, then why are they stopping production? Well, my friends, let's take a quick look at Google Trends. It shows how many people are searching for a given word or phrase, and you can pretty much take that as a good indication of interest in the market in general. So between 2012 and 2014-ish, there was a real growth in interest in cafe racers, probably as retro bikes generally were becoming more more and more popular. Just after that, scramblers were becoming more popular too. But the thing is, searches for scramblers seem to have endured, whereas cafe racers have really tailed off in the last few years, almost to pre-2012 levels. So perhaps the whole cafe racer thing was a bit more of a brief fad. Now you can also look at DVLA figures to see how many of a certain make and model are on the road, and you could take that as a rough indication of how many they've sold. When the Thruxton 1200 was introduced back in 2016, almost 800 hit the road straight away, but the next year it was more like a couple of hundred, the year after that more like a hundred. Not huge figures and by the time they introduced the RS it's like 40 or 50 a year tops. Now contrast that with the Speed Twin 1200, a very similar bike with pretty much the same engine, it's got a sporty chassis as well but it's just a lot more upright in the riding position. That launched later in 2018 and yet it still sells two or three hundred bikes a year and there are far more of them on the road. This isn't specific to Triumph and the Thruxton as well. If you look at the Royal Enfield for example, the Continental GT Cafe Racer, there are far fewer of those than the Interceptor 650. So interest in Cafe Racers seems to be on the slide and the Thruxton isn't a massive seller, but that had me wondering, well why? So I put up a poll on my YouTube ahead of this announcement to ask you my audience audience, which would you buy, a Speed Twin or a Thruxton? The Thruxton is fun to ride for half an hour on a Sunday, but the Speed Twin is fun to ride all day every day, said Max Fleming 1045. Speed Twin for sensibility and practicality, Thruxton for styling and specs, said Lock Enquart 6388, and Speed Twin less money, more comfortable, said David Bodden 8435. Now there were over 400 comments on that post, and apart from the odd exception, the overwhelming majority chose the 
speed twin because it's a much more practical and comfortable and versatile machine and at quite a significantly lower cost. The Thruxton RS, for example, that starts at 14,195 at the moment, whereas the Speed Twin 1200, that starts at 11,795, so near enough two and a half grand in your pocket. So look, is the comfort thing really that bad? Well, let's take one out for a spin and find out. But before we get on the road, I just want to say a massive thanks to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. We use their awesome X3 camera for all of our riding footage, and it's genuinely been a game changer for the way we shoot our rides. The best thing for me about a 360 camera like this is that you can mount it pretty much anywhere on the bike, and then use their software, either in the app or their desktop editor, to reframe your footage after the ride and choose some creative angles. You can even export a portrait crop for social media or horizontal for videos like this one and so it's a super fun and creative way to capture and share your pride and joy on your favorite rides genuinely i'd be using these now instead of a regular action cam regardless of their sponsorship because they're much more versatile and fun to use and they also have some excellent mounts and motorcycle specific accessories so you can easily find a way to get the angle that you want so i thoroughly recommend checking them out through the link in the description and if you use my link you'll also get a free gift with every x3 cam camera purchase. So once again, a massive thanks to Insta360 for their support. And with that, back to the Thruxton. Man, I really do love this bike. The engine is an absolute peach and there's so much grunt in the low to mid revs that it just charges forward without having to really like wind it up. And the sound of these Bonneville twins is just exceptional. I don't know how they make their bikes sound so good with modern day emissions restrictions being what they are, but they do. You sort of feel a bit like you're on a sports bike. The braking power and feel is up there with the best modern bikes and the handling feels like precise and nimble. I mean, granted, it's not the best day to be out on Metzler race techs, but when it's warm and dry, they're incredible. And the only thing you'll notice versus something like a speed triple is that extra bit of weight on this bike. Being a retro, they've had to give it the looks, but stuff like the steel cradle frame, it's always gonna be a touch more hefty than the way they build their modern roadsters. I think another big part of what makes this bike so awesome to ride is the Lux. Now this is specifically a chrome edition that they released for 2023. And when you roll past the shop window and catch your reflection, we all do it, but it just looks super cool. Like I say, in my eyes, it's like perfectly proportioned and the level of finish is top draw, as you'd expect with one of these Triumph modern classics. Thing is, would I buy one though? Well, I think it depends what it would be for. If I had the luxury of owning a few bikes, then this would make for an almost unbeatable Sunday toy for those warm countryside rides in the summer where you want to go quick and you want to do it in style. But look, maybe if I was just shopping for one bike that could do a bit of everything, something I'd want to get my money's worth out of then honestly i do think the speed twin would have to be the one you're just a little bit too low at the front here a little bit too much weight on the arms and so after an hour or two you really do want to be sitting up so look i get it if a bike isn't that comfy then it probably won't have broad appeal and if it doesn't have broad appeal then it probably won't sell that well if it won't sell that well then it probably won't be made anymore but the thruxton for me will always be one of those bikes that i'd have in my dream garage all right so here we have it the final edition of the Triumph Thruxton. The majority of the specs are pretty much the same as the current RS model. So the same 1200cc Bonneville parallel twin, nice and punchy with loads of torque, 105 horsepower peak and 112 newton meters, both made relatively low in the rev range. And you've got this beautiful gold anodized Showa fork that's fully adjustable. Olin shocks at the rear, again, full adjustability. Super sporty Brembo M50 radially mounted four pot calipers on big 320mm discs. And you've also got a Brembo radial your master cylinder up at the lever there and it rolls on these 17 inch spoke wheels with the black rims and they're on Metzler Racetech RR tires so super sporty and super sticky but what makes this edition particularly special is this competition green paint job which they say has been used as like a nod to British racing heritage now the tank is finished off nicely with the old school Triumph logo in gold and the hand painted gold lining and this carries through to the seat cowl at the rear which has also got some nice little logo goes on the side and on the back there. Now the side panels and mug guards are finished in black and I think that helps to give it that cafe racer straight line across the top. But again you've got some nice little details on the side panels with a dedicated logo that gets 
FE at the end there and then final edition along the bottom. Now there is also, I'm pleased to report, the optional classic cafe style fairing too, which I think is an absolute must for the Thruxton. It really does complete the look. You also get a gold finished alternator badge on this bike and a certificate of authenticity signed by Triumph CEO Nick Bloor and the design team who actually worked on the Thruxton 1200. The price though, well it's £15,095 in the UK and £17,995 in the US. And so while that may not be an insubstantial amount of money, it is your last chance. As always, I'd love to know what you think of the final edition of this incredible line of bikes, so do let me know down in the comments below. And if you think the Speed Twin looks like more your sort of thing, then I've recently made an overview of the things you need to know before you buy one, and so I'll put that on the screen now so you can give it a click and give it a watch. Also, do hit subscribe if you haven't already if you want to see more motorcycle news and reviews like this. Many thanks for watching today, and we'll see you next time.